Hi. In this tutorial, I'm going to be walking through the common interview question, which is the Fibonacci sequence or Fibonacci number. And this is a great interview question that you'll experience in entry level and even senior level computer science or software engineering positions because it's a good way to um, show your knowledge on recursion and looping and when to decide between the two. It's a great way to um, demonstrate your general overall concept of programming or algorithm design, any logic flow. So this tutorial, since JavaScript is the one of the most common languages out there right now, I'm going to be um, showing you how to determine, make these calculations with JavaScript. Um, you could also do it in Java, C, pretty much any language you can accomplish this in. But this tutorial is going to go over uh, with JavaScript. So let's go ahead and start by creating a project. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create one on my desktop. Uh, I already made a directory for it. So let's go ahead and open up that directory. And inside that directory, I'm going to create two files. So the first file I'm going to create is index.html. And the second file I'm going to create is app.js. And you can combine this all in one file if you want. I'm just going to separate it for cleanliness. It's all up to you though. So in the HTML file, let's go ahead and make our, our base file here. Oops. All right, now that we've got our base file, now we're actually going to start doing the, the functions that are required for the Fibonacci number. So if you're, if you're not familiar with the Fibonacci uh, number or sequence, what it is is you're going to start your sequence with uh, two ones or a zero and a one, and then every, every uh, subsequent number in that sequence is going to be the sum of the previous numbers. So for example, we would have one, one, and then one plus one is two, and then two plus one is three, two plus three is five, and it's gonna go on and on and on um, for as long as you wanna make it go on for. So let me go ahead and clear that out. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make a new uh, class in JavaScript. So we're gonna go ahead and say uh, function Fibonacci, And then that this uh, class is going to create is going to contain two functions in it. The first function we're going to say is called looping. We're actually going to say this dot looping equals function, and then we're also going to have another uh, function that's called recursive because there's two ways to solve this. So you can use the looping method or you can use the recursion method. Now I'm going to go through each one of those separately. So starting with the looping, we're going to do the following here. We're going to declare our variables here first. Variable a, oops, variable a equals zero, b equals one, and then f, which is going to be our current Fibonacci number, is also going to be one. So the F really doesn't matter when we initialize it. We can set that to null if we want. Um, A and B represent the first two numbers in our sequence. So let's go ahead and loop. I'll explain this in a second. All right, so we're creating a for loop, but we're starting on the index of two. Um, and what that really means is it's going to be the third index because 0 and 1 are already defined up here. So this is going to be index 0 and this is going to be index 1. So we're, we're really starting on index uh, the third one. So inside of our loop, we're going to say f equals a plus b. And then we're going to say a is going to equal to b. And then b is equal to whatever our new Fibonacci number is. And we are going to return the Fibonacci f. 
So by doing this, it's going to go ahead and increase the cycle and continue making our sum values. So let's go back into our index.html and we're going to try this out. So we're going to say variable f equals new Fibonacci. I always misspell that somehow. And then we're going to say, um, we're actually going to loop through this. So we're going to say for var i equals, let's say, uh, Let's say two. Now we can say zero. Let's see what happens with zero. Less than or equal to fifteen. I plus plus. And then let's go ahead and figure out what is happening here. We're going to create a sequence number though. The Fibonacci sequence. It's going to be a string. And then we're going to say. Fibonacci sequence plus equals, um, we're going to say f dot looping. I'm going to pass in the i value. And we are going to do plus an empty string at the end. And then we're going to go ahead and print it to log here. Notice that we're printing it uh, to the log outside of our loop. All right, so let's go ahead and we're going to open up the index.html file inside of our web browser. We're going to use Safari in this case, and we're going to look at the logs here. And we've got an error. Cannot find variable n. All right, that's because I didn't pass one in right here. So this is n. And that's going to be the Fibonacci number that we're after. So let's go back in here and reload it. You can see because I started at, uh, I think I started at zero, it's got one too many values in there. But for the most part, the sequence is correct. Let's go ahead and adjust it so that way we don't start at zero. Let's see what happens now. Yeah. So this is something that you're most probably most familiar with. So just to elaborate here again, the looping function is out it goes after the Fibonacci number. But because we're looping through 1 to 15, um, it's creating a sequence of numbers. So don't get confused. Our functions are only finding the Fibonacci number. But in our index.html code, we're finding the sequence. So now it's time to go ahead and create the recursive version of this. So we're going to go ahead and do the following. Let's not forget to pass in n. So we're going to say if n is less than n is less than or equal to 2, we're going to return 1. Although Otherwise, we're going to say return this dot recursive n minus one plus this dot recursive n minus two. So I'll explain that in a second after we go ahead and test this out. I'm just going to copy and paste. So I copied and pasted, and instead of looping, we're going to say recursive. Let's go ahead and clear our terminal here, or our logs, and we're going to refresh it. You can see that they, they match. So recursion can be a little difficult to wrap your head around. So I'm going to go ahead and type out what this means. I'm actually going to only do it to the fifth. Uh, we're going to do it as if we were finding the fifth Fibonacci number. So I'm just going to enter down here. And we're going to do it inside of uh, a comment. So say we're using the, the value of 5. What that really means is we're going to say recursive 4 plus recursive 3. And then that can be further broken down uh, when we go into our cycle. Recursive 3 plus recursive 
2, and that's because it's the 4, so n minus 1 is 3, n minus 2 is 2. And then we can say plus recursive 2 plus recursive 1. So when we break that down to the next level, this is what we've got. Recursive 2 plus recursive 1 plus 1. So the 1 actually came from here because remember, if we pass in anything that's equal to 2 or less, we're going to get a value of 1. So you can see right here we're passing in a value of 2, which is now 1. And then we're going to say plus, again we're passing in a value of 2, so that's a 1, plus recursive value of 1, which is also 1. And then if we break down the next level, we have 1 plus 1, which is because we have the 2 and then the 1, following our trend here, we're going to say plus 1, which is this value right here. I didn't, I didn't sum all these up, I'm just leaving them as 1s. Plus 1 plus 1, which are these two values right here. So now we've broken it down completely. And ignoring the fact that I probably have a bracket problem somewhere, doesn't really matter. So when we're all said and done with this, our total is 5. And that's exactly where we should be on the fifth one. It should be 5. So you can see how the recursion worked in this scenario. So you just saw how to calculate the Fibonacci number uh, using JavaScript, using a looping method and a recursive method. And again, it doesn't matter if you're an entry-level programmer or a senior-level pro level programmer. If you're looking for uh, a job, there's a pretty good chance at some point you're going to see a question like this, whether it be in a phone screening or uh, in a technical interview. It doesn't really matter. It's a good thing to know. Um, I'm going to be posting a few more of these type videos of possible interview questions that uh, might help you on your path.